So of course my phone dies right when I go over with the students what I have here on this board. So let me go over this real quick. We've got two types of motion when it comes to the relationship of the rib cage and the scapula. We've got the one that everybody knows and it's a scapula moving on a rib cage. That means the rib cage is fixed, the rib cage does not move, and then the scapula moves around the rib cage. That's shoulder blade retraction, shoulder blade protraction, upward rotation, downward rotation, all the motions that you use to train the scapula. But then we've got a rib cage moving on a scapula, which means scapula is fixed or the shoulder blades are fixed and then the rib cage moves around it. And this is an example of it. The picture on, or the drawing on the left, rib cage protraction, means the shoulder blades stay, but the rib cage goes forward. Rib cage retraction, shoulder blades stay, and the rib cage goes back. This right here is an optimal position to start your exercises. If you start with your rib cage forward, what happens is a lot of muscles like your low trap, mid trap muscles don't have leverage to work. So if you want optimal scapula movement, you need a concave scapula to sit on a, concave, a convex rib cage like this, not like this. If you do things like let's say Y's, T's, whatever you're trying to do. If you're trying to do a shoulder blade that moves on a rib cage, but the starting position is here, what you end up having are people complaining of, I feel everything in my neck, or push-ups hurt my shoulders, or I struggle retracting my shoulder blades. And the reason is because they never started in a position of a rib cage retracted, which means a scapula sitting on a rib cage. When you get a scapula sitting on the rib cage, you get good things happening.